All right, this is the second part in a four-part series on this modular portable garage uh, using weldments and SOLIDWORKS. I'm going to get right into it. These first sketches here that you can see on the screen, they're all master sketches. They are used to control uh, the rest of the model. I'm going to go ahead and turn them off and move forward down into the model itself. So the first thing we have here is we have the floor and the top of the floor corresponds with the top um, the top plane in SOLIDWORKS and this is inch and eighth TNG uh, it's inch and eighth thick didn't bother putting in all the seams uh, next what we have is we have a 13 inch tall C channel uh, it's MC 13 by, let's see here, 13 by 31.8. Uh, normally I use 10 inch, but the reason I used 13 was I needed the extra height. And then after that, we have the rim, excuse me, the rim joists. Um, those are mitered and then bolted to the inside of the C channel. You could go with something thicker if you wanted to get those joists outside or the the rim joists outside of the C channel. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, so actually, I'm going to roll back and show you that those are mitered. Though I mitered them, I trimmed them to the uh, C channel. So we'll have a look at that real quick, and you can see that. The rim joist is 11 and a half inch tall, so it's a 2x12. Is that when I'm using a 2x12? Let's see. Yeah. So I'm using 2x12 wet lumber and then I'm trimming it down. You can see that there's still quite a bit from this inside edge to the very edge of the C channel. Um, like I said, you may want to fill that in, you may not. So we'll move on here. Um, what I basically have next is I have a bunch of two by fours uh, laminated together. So what I did is let me roll back through those real quick. Um, I started out with an eight foot long two by four. And I knew I was going to have to do some patterning, so I went ahead and patterned those over and forward. And you can see they stick past the end of the, of the building. And then I did a second one, and I did that at only four feet long, so they overlap. And so I think I patterned that first set out. Nope, I added an eight footer. So I there's a four foot and then an eight foot piece right here. Then I patterned those as well. And basically what that does, um, I want to drive a vehicle on it and tires are point loads. And so I didn't want the spacing in between the floor joists to, you know, to have a belly or a sag. So I basically made these composite beams to run across the bottom of the floor. Um, and then I trimmed off the ends and mirrored it. So these are two paths. This fits both my truck and my car. Uh, made sure they're wide enough for both. And if you wanted the numbers for those, that's on the first video. You'll see in the master control sketch for the floor. And then what I did is I added a bunch of material for um, transferring the load down to the BCIs. So all this next um, stuff is, is they're 2x4s that have been trimmed and then patterned down along the floor. There's also going to be a BCI right there. I haven't yet determined how I'm going to attach these BCIs. I may actually do what I was saying in the first part of the video and build this out so it's flush. And then I can just use joist hangers. Uh, not real sure at this point what I'm going to do. But that may be the cheapest solution. 
So that comprises the floor system. You have BCIs that do all your load bearing, and then you have these two um, beams on their composite beams for the point load of the tires, and you have spacers that transfer the load down onto the BCI, which are just two by fours as well. Uh, this concludes the second part of the video. So part three will be the walls and possibly the ceiling. There's nothing too special about those. This is the end of part two. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks.